Welcome to the 8th lecture of Advanced Calculus course. In today's lecture, we will prove that a continuous function defined on a closed interval is bounded and has a maximum value and a minimum value. So, the first statement we would like to prove is that if f defined on a closed interval is a continuous function, then it is bounded. And the second statement that we would like to prove is that if f is a continuous function, then f has a maximum value and a minimum value. Now first, let's begin with the first statement. Proof. We'll prove the statement with the method of, of contradiction, meaning that we'll first assume that f defined on this interval is not bounded above. And then we'll derive a contradiction. To obtain the result that f was actually bounded above, and using the same method, we'll prove, prove that the function f is bounded below as well. So how do we do this? Now first we assume that the function is not bounded above. Then that means uh, that a certain natural number n, any natural number n, cannot be a upper bound to the function. Uh, so any natural number n cannot be an upper bound of the uh, of the function, and what that means is that there exists a certain number c such that the function value evaluated at that point is greater than n. Well, we could add an equal sign here too, greater than or equal to n. So because the c depends on n, let's say that, uh, let's label the c c sub n. Now there are two cases. The first case is when the sequence c sub n converges to a certain number c. This case, the it is a it is an immediate contradiction because from the previous discussion of uh, convergence, we know that a conv converging sequence is bounded. So this means that since since f is a uh, f is a continuous function, f c n will also converge to a certain number f c. And since the uh, since the sequence f evaluated at the point c sub n is converging, then it is bounded. Now that means that there exists a certain number b that is an and that is a and that is an upper bound of the sequence f uh, f c f evaluated at c sub n. So it will be greater than or equal to every single term, every term in the sequence. And we know that from our assumption that this, uh, this term in the sequence is greater than or equal to natural number n. That is how we define the sequence. So we can see that this number b is serving as an upper bound for all natural numbers. However, in the previous lectures, we have proven that 
the set of all natural numbers is unbounded. So it should not have any uh, upper bound like this. So this is a contradiction. So we have proven the first case. Now we look at the second case when the sequence C sub n does not converge to a certain number. Now, even though the sequence does not uh, the sequence does not converge by itself, we know that this uh, every term in the sequence is an element of the interval a a to b, and therefore the sequence c sub n is bounded. And uh, by the Bolzano virus uh, by the Bolzano virus uh, stra uh, virus stress. Weierstrass theorem, we know that even though the sequence does not converge by itself, it has a converging subsequence, C and sub K, that converges to a certain number C. Now, since F is a converging sequence, uh, uh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, since F is a continuous function, we know that the sequence F, C, sub N sub K, converges to a certain number FC, and since this, and since the sequence is converging, it is bounded, and therefore there exists a certain number b greater than or equal to every term in the sequence, which is greater than n sub k. And now, using mathematical induction, and try to prove that n n sub k is always greater than or e equal to k. The proof is quite easy. So when k equals 1, uh, n sub 1 it is a natural number, so of course it will be greater than or equal to 1. And assume that the relationship holds until k, uh, k equals r, then we know that n r is greater than, uh, greater than or equal to r. And if we look at uh, we assume until this point, and if we look at the next term, k equals r, r plus 1, n sub r plus 1, since this is a sequence, it will be greater than n r, which is greater than or equal to r. So the, uh, so the conclusion we get is that n sub r plus 1 is greater than r plus 1, and therefore for any, every natural number k, n sub k is greater than or equal to k. So, since that is our conclusion, again, B is serving, B is serving as a upper bound for all natural numbers, uh, the, set of, uh, the set of all natural numbers, the set of K. S and since, again, the set of all natural numbers is unbounded, it, uh, the uh, statement that B serves as an upper bound to this set is a contradiction and therefore we have got a contradiction in case 2 as well and since these two cases cover all of the possible cases we know that our assumption leads uh, always leads to a contradiction and therefore our assumption is false so the conclusion we get is that f is bounded above and using uh, using a very similar and symmetric Logic, we can also prove that f is bounded below as well. And therefore, we have proven that a continuous function defined on a closed interval is bounded. Now, let's move on to the proof of the second statement. Now, how do you prove the second statement? From the uh, from the first statement, we know that uh, f defined on this interval is bounded, and by our axiom, com completeness of R, complete completeness of reals implies, oops, completeness implies that there exists a certain number m that is a supremum of the set of the image 
of the function f. Since this is a since this is a bounded subset, bounded non-empty subset of all real numbers, there exists a supremum of the set. And let us denote that supremum m. Now what we need to prove is that there exists a certain number c in the domain of function f such that the function value evaluated at that point is greater than or equal to m. This would mean by the definition of supremum, since m is a least upper bound of the set f, <coughs> uh, of the set uh, image of f, this would imply that fc is an upper bound. Since this, it is a number greater than or uh, since it is a number greater than or equal to the least upper bound of the set. Uh, what that means is that fc is greater than or equal to every uh, every element in the image of the function f, and that would imply that fc is a maximum value of the function f defined at the interval a, a to b. So what we need to prove is that there exists a, so we need to find a certain number c in the domain such that the function value evaluated at the point is greater than or equal to m. Now how do we find that point? Since m is a supremum of this set, we know that m minus 1 over n for natural number n, this is a number less than m and therefore it cannot be it cannot be an upper bound of the image of f since m is the least upper bound possible so what that means is that this number m minus 1 over n uh, cannot cannot be a upper bound of the set of the image of f so that means there exists a certain number c sub n in a to b such that m minus 1 over n is less than the function value evaluated at that point c sub n. So we could find the sequence c sub n like that for every real uh, every natural number n. Now again, if we look at the sequence c sub n, it is again a bounded sequence bounded by the interval a to b. It's bounded sequence, so by the bolzano weierstrass theorem, there exists a converging subsequence of that sequence c sub n that converges to a certain number c. And again, uh, because f is a continuous function, we know that f c sub n sub k will converge to a certain number fc and since this relationship holds for every natural number n we know that fc is greater than or equal to m now why is that because the left left has left hand side uh, of this equation uh, of the of the relationship uh, the inequality of the relationship m over 1 over <clears throat> n sub k is less than the uh, the function value evaluated at c sub n sub k now if we uh, if we take the limit on both sides of this relationship this side will obviously go to m obviously converge to m because as, uh, as k increases, uh, n sub k will also increase, and this value will converge to 0. So this whole value will converge to m. And by, by the continuity of the function f, we know that this value will converge to uh, f sub c. And since we are taking limit, the uh, less than sign will become less than or equal to sign, because uh, limit of 2 
two sequences with strict inequality at each point, let's say like this, the, the limit may equal even though each term in the in the sequence may have a strict relationship. The limit may uh, limit may coincide. So the uh, in, uh, so the equality sign will be added to the relationship. So our conclusion is that the point uh, the function value evaluated evaluated at point C is greater than or equal to M. So we have found the C that we want. And therefore, we have proven that fc, uh, uh, the function f, has a maximum value. And automatically, automatically, we know that the function has a minimum value as well. Uh, because if function f is a continuous function, function minus f will be a continuous function as well. And since this, this is a continuous function, it will have a maximum value, let's say uh, small m. Then the, since small m is a maximum value of function, function minus f, it will be a minimum value of function f. Therefore, we have proven that a continuous function defined on a closed interval has both a maximum number, uh, both a maximum value and a minimum value. This is the end of the uh, end of the eighth lecture of advanced calculus course. In the next lecture, we will discuss the continuity of inverse functions. Thank you, and see you at the next lecture.